Good morning, John. This is kind of a dream come true for me. Recently, we started a residency at SciShow for newer science communicators. The idea basically is for four or five months, you get paid to be a part of our editorial team pitching and writing and editing scripts. And then at the end, we fly you out to Missoula and you host those episodes. It's always a little bit scary to do new things, but our first resident, Jada Elcock, finished her residency recently and absolutely everyone loved working with her and I loved hanging out with her. And I also had an idea for something I wanted to do while she was in town because I am obsessed with what makes a good fact. Unsurprisingly, probably, I've been writing facts for like 20 years now, and it used to be that I just went by feel, which is of course fine. But the same way you can dissect a punchline and understand what makes something funny, you can dissect a fact to try and figure out why it's working on people and what makes it good. Now, a good fact doesn't really have to be anything more than interesting. Of course, what adds up to interesting is very complicated and probably worth discussing at some point, but interestingness does not make for a great a great fact on its own. A great fact is both interesting and it uncovers something true about the world or about the person learning the thing. Something that is complex and hard to either understand or internalize or that changes how you see the world after you know it. So combining that thought with the fact that I am so lucky that I get to hang out with lots of science communicators, I wanted to start asking people what their best fact is. And so here it is, Jada's best fact followed by my best shark fact. You may never see the world the same way again. What's your best fact? I think my best fact, which of course is going to be a shark fact. I should have said Jada is a, a shark scientist. Yes. What is that, a thresher shark thresher on your earrings? Thresher sharks on my earrings because I wore thresher a fish sharks shirt. are my favorite. I do appreciate the, yeah. the fish drip. Something that I think people find very shocking is is you find out that the largest fish on the planet is a shark. It is the whale shark. The largest one ever recorded, I think, was somewhere around 61 feet long. What's that in, like, bowling alleys? Bowling like alleys. a lane. How long is a bowling alley? I don't know. You don't have stored in your head the length of a bowling lane? 60 feet. Oh, okay. So a bowling lane. Think of a bowling lane, and that is the largest shark. That's a long way. Ever recorded, though. The average is closer to, like, 35. Still, yeah, not a small shark. You find out that the largest fish on the planet is 40 feet long and a shark. And yeah. that is immediately terrifying to people. <laughs> people have like a very healthy fear of sharks. Like I understand that healthy fear. I always say we cannot let the fear get in the way of right. the respect though. I will say, have. I also have an unhealthy fear of sharks. In what? addition to the healthy fear. Wait, why? What? How because so? I just, I'm in a lake and I'm like, what if there's a shark? Well, bull sharks swim in freshwater, so. I don't think they got to Montana. <laughs> However, one oh, no. has been found <laughs> so far up the Mississippi. Like it was in Illinois. What? Yeah. There's Illinois Sharks? Uh, there was at one point. They should name the minor league baseball team after that guy. You see this huge shark. It is a filter feeder. Its teeth right. are no more than a couple centimeters long, and it can't swallow anything bigger than, like, a grapefruit. Maybe even a quarter. Because Whoa, all they yeah. eat is phytoplankton. Also, the whale shark being... Phytoplankton meaning plant plankton. Like Sorry, that. no, no, no. I meant okay. zooplankton, but they do also eat sargassum, which is like a seaweed. Okay. So they are the second identified omnivorous shark species on the planet. Oh, after? The bonnethead shark. I'll put a picture of that there. Your smallest hammerhead species. They eat seagrass oh. and they like actually digest and get nutrients oh. from it. They thought in both cases that it was just like incidentally ingesting something while they're eating other things and like... Oh, they'll just pass it, it's fine. But no, they're actually breaking it down and getting nutrients from it, so they're considered omnivores. The thing that comes with this fact is the more knowledge you have about something, the less typically you fear it. Right. Understandably, a lot of people are afraid of sharks. If you've seen Jaws... They're very you, mysterious. Yeah, Jaws jumping out of the water and eating seals and stuff, and you're like, I don't want to be that seal, and I totally get that. But then you learn that there are sharks that are omnivores or filter feeders that yeah. even if they wanted to, physically cannot swallow you, and I feel like that kind of... <laughs> eases the fear just a little bit. So you get in the water with whale sharks? Yes. Have you ever been worried that you might accidentally get into one of its their mouths? No, I just don't swim directly in front of their face. Do you want to know my best shark fact? Yes. This is going to sound like the fact on its own. Sharks are less related to bass than bass are to humans. Mm -hmm. So like humans and bass have a closer common ancestor than bass have with sharks. Yep. I don't know. This Osteichthys is the bony fish. Yes. Do you know what the cartilaginous? is? Chondrichthys. Chondrichthys. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> There's more to being a bony fish than just being a bony fish. And one of those things is scales. Right. So just like mammals have like a four-chambered heart and they have hair and they have placentas, many of them, not all of them. What, what else do mammals have? They... Mammary glands? They have, that's the big one. <laughs> 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 so there's all these like things that, that mammals have in common, and there's also lots of things that bony fish have in common. And they have scales. Cartilaginous fish don't have fish scales. Right. They have something else. Mm -hmm. But they do have scales. 
Kind of. Yeah. They're not called scales. They're called dermal denticles. Dermal means skin. Mm -hmm. Denticle means teeth. Yeah. It means like little teeth thingies. And that's not because they look like teeth or they function like teeth or they're like smooth like teeth. It's because they're teeth. Our fingernails and our skin and our hair are all made of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all made of care. In the same way, sharks, when, when faced with the need for like a protective skin covering, instead of evolving a separate thing, used the same biochemical mechanisms to create skin teeth that have on the inside uh, they have dentine, and on the outside they have enamel. It's just teeth! Just like our teeth, chemically, they're made of the same stuff. Yes, they have skin teeth. And I love saying that to people and watching yeah. them completely panic. I'm like, they're like, what does that mean? I'm like, allow me to explain. And they also, like, they grow new ones. Just mm -hmm. like they like, replace their mouth teeth, they replace their skin teeth. Yep. And once they get bigger, they have to make more of them to fill in the gaps. And also, whale sharks another whale shark thing. They have them on their eyeballs. What? <laughs> I believe that this was discovered in 2020, somewhere around there. Recently somebody was like, has anybody put a whale shark <laughs> eye under a microscope ever? My hypothesis, it's probably for protection of their eyes as well. Protecting from like pathogens and parasites and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The reason this, this, is a, this is my best fact mm -hmm. of the day, it, it shows two things about evolution. One, you can solve the same problem in different ways. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes evolution like converges. So yeah. like scales, like they are both kind of like scales in that they're these little skin protective things, but it arrives at the solution very differently. But also evolution reuses stuff. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that our skin is made of keratin and our hair is made of keratin, like that seems kind of normal to me because I'm exposed to that idea. I'm aware of it, but it seems very unusual that you could do the same thing with something as specific as a tooth. As teeth, yeah. And that like, like skin teeth could happen. Mm -hmm. But it's just reusing a bunch of mechanisms that already had to build a specific structure, but build it in a different way to achieve a different purpose. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Evolution just, Yeah. she impresses me every day. I don't know. Sharks are just the coolest. And yeah. there's so many of them. They fill so many different niches. There's some in the tropics. There's some in the oh, yeah. Arctic. There's oh, yeah. fast ones and slow ones and big ones and little ones. And there used to be one that could eat an orca in five bites. Yeah. Oh, and a person in half a bite. I want the Megalodon to still be alive. You're the only one. Probably. <laughs> Jada, thank you so much for letting the team at Complexly experiment on you. It's been a delight to get to know you. Complexly, which is our educational media company, is always trying to figure out how to do cool new things in the world and also how to invest what we can in the next generation of science communicators. If it's not clear, we take the responsibility of making educational content very seriously. Like my shirt says, Good information is worth it. And you can get this shirt if you support Complexly during the Learnathon. Also, I'm doing a trivia night on the last day of the Learnathon, but in order to participate, you have to donate $15. You can find out more about that and other Learnathon events at complexly.com slash learnathon. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. Also, report from today. This video has now been filmed on three different days, and now it's Friday, and I gotta get this video uploaded, but Jada, I said at the beginning of this video, doesn't have a YouTube channel, but she does. She started one. And it has a video of the two of us answering fish questions on it right now. And I'll put a link in the description. Or maybe on the end screen. Is that a thing? Oh, God, I never use the end screen. Is it there now? Maybe. Okay, bye. Channel my inner Furby. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>